So before we do start this video, it's been an absolutely topsy-turvy week in pro wrestling, so I would implore you to go and watch my SmackDown ups and downs that you can see on What Culture Wrestling. A card will pop up right now. Because that is where I address all the Vince McMahon allegations as best as I possibly can, and I don't think I can say it better than that. So again, if you would like to get my take on it and why I deserve any opinion on this, I do not know, but I understand that I do have a small place in the wider wrestling community. So yes, it is there, but for now... We're going to talk about the Royal Rumble. Because, of course, on Saturday night, Cody Rhodes won the Men's Royal Rumble and Bailey won the Women's Royal Rumble, which meant I was halfway there living on a prayer. Although, actually, I did then take that back and I went with Becky Lynch. But, you know, what are you going to do? But I was convinced that CM Punk was going to win it. Now, actually, as we do move into Raw, which is going to be going on later, obviously, I think the WWE may have a story on its hand that I never fathomed that they would do because you've moved Cody Rhodes into the Superman position. He's the first guy to win back-to-back -back Royal Rumbles since Stone Cold did it in 98 and 99 or whatever it was. But now with CM Punk, you can come kind of veer off in the other direction. And again, I thought he was just going to walk back in and go, ha ha, I won the Royal Rumble. But no. So I think what's going to happen is that Punk is going to come out. Maybe Seth Rollins says something to him like, he, he, he. he likes doing that laugh. You're not allowed to get a world title shot. And Punk should be maybe, and this would maybe be a little bit of a different version for CM Punk too, dare I say, not humbled, but humbled by the fact he wasn't able to beat, in his own words, Dusty's kid. Because then you always tell this amazing story where he does kind of have to fight from underneath. And he is going to have to go to the Elimination Chamber in Australia and try and win the damn thing and only then can he take on Seth Rollins and I think this could be what WWE does like to do. Again, I'm totally speculating. But if you go back to any sort of superstar that has come back after a long time away, especially if they left on controversial terms, there's usually one or two matches where it doesn't necessarily go the way that maybe it should go because they like to teach them a lesson or they just like to see, are you going to play ball now? But even if that's what they were doing here, I do think the narrative we put in place is far more compelling because seeing Cody Rhodes just pointing at Roman Reigns, pointing at the sign, obviously, everybody has to point at the sign. But seeing him just pointing at Roman Reigns like, no, listen, there's no... If Butts or maybe's here coming after you, big dog, and I'm probably going to whip your ass. I mean, it works on two levels. One, if you believe in finishing the story, it certainly does seem like we're going to pull the trigger. But two, now it doesn't feel like we're going to do the Rock versus Roman Reigns. <laughs> Because if we do, man, we're going to mug off Cody. And you cannot do that. Like, if you would come up with an idea for The Rock to win the Royal Rumble or something, then fine. Everyone could go, all right, we've shifted gears. We're not going to do it. And there would have been a discourse about that too. But now you have told people that are very much in Cody Rhodes' corner, I shall be one of them, that we are headed in that direction. So now you have to head in that direction. And if you don't, I tell you this, The Rock is probably going to get some boots. Through no fault of his own, that's just how crazy wrestling works. So that, as far as I'm concerned, is a wonderful thing. I imagine Cody Rhodes will now be more on SmackDown than Raw, or maybe he'll just be on both. I mean, he's is a super duper megastar. But yeah, I think that CM Punk is probably going to do that. And given everything that comes along with CM Punk, having people actually point to him and go, dude, you're just a little bit of a loser right now. It may even bring out his more heelish side, dare I say. It. And that is what happened at the end of the Royal Rumble. This is why I thought it was so cool. People love Cody Rhodes so much. Look, there were still loads of people in support of Punk, but he did get some noticeable boos, whereas Cody was all cheers. And I just thought that was a wonderful nugget because, again, CM Punk does have this edge to him. He has this kind of aura, I suppose, that he is able to sort of portray a tweener character, to use stupid terms that exist within the world of wrestling. But there was also that moment with Drew McIntyre, which made me raise an eyebrow because you potentially could do a triple threat match at WrestleMania, not in the Universal title match, which I thought it was going to be. You could do The Rock versus Cody versus Roman, which you may still do. You never know, although a lot of the usual dirt sheets are saying that Roman versus Rock one-on-one -on -one is going to happen at some point in 2024. Now that we do have two main events and they both count as main events, we talked about it before, one can probably be a triple threat. So why don't you move Drew McIntyre into that position? Because one, we don't know what's going to happen with Seth Rollins' injury, so it's actually quite of a nice keep safe in case it does go bad. But two, there is certainly something in seeing Punk becoming the champion by pinning Drew McIntyre. Now, in many ways, I don't want that because I think Drew has lost too many matches. But that's when we have to bring an extra caveat in and you can see where there's so much to discuss here because if we are to believe what we read on the internet and again always take it with a pinch of salt apparently he hasn't signed a new deal yet and post wrestlemania he can go and do whatever he wants so that's not a bad way to use him if he is on his way out cm punk becomes the world heavyweight champion because he beats drew mcintyre and then you can move into the proper cm punk versus seth rollins feud because seth can be like uh listen chief i never actually locked that belt and of course cm punk can be the guy again it totally ties into his character and what he's able to do i don't care man i told you i was going to main event wrestlemania i did it i told you i was going to the world title and I did it and the main reason that I don't care that I kind of cut some corners is because look what happened at the Royal Rumble I can't suffer with that again so you can kiss my tush so while 
where I actually did think the men's rumble was just a little bit uneventful, I guess for lack of a better word. It did end with CM Punk versus Cody Rhodes. I don't think we should forget this because even if I had told you that was a potential back in last September, you would have punched me right in the face and you would have been right to do it. But yes, when you do take the whole 30 man, however long it went, one hour five, one hour 10, it lacked surprises and it lacked maybe a true focus on some stories. Like one of my disappointments, and it doesn't matter, like I still had a good time. I still walked away going, that was an entertaining show, is that I love the fact we started with Jimmy and Jay Uso, one or two, but then it never really went anywhere. It didn't really build, didn't really evolve, and I would have loved it if they could have eliminated each other, and that built to the WrestleMania match. And it's kind of thrown me so off course, and I'll probably get this totally wrong. It's the first time I've started to think, well, maybe we're not doing the Usos versus Usos at WrestleMania. Maybe we're going to do something else. I mean, you could do Gunther versus Jay Uso and have Jay Uso win the Ontin Continental Championship. I'm never going to get mad at that because I think it would really give Jay Uso a massive push. But there were a few things like that, although there were counterpoints as well. If you actually watch the thing, Jimmy Uso was hilarious in this. His story of the Rumble was I'm going to keep trying to make friends with people and they're all going to mug me off. And the way he sold and the little dances that he does, I understand his moving back into the bloodline didn't really make much sense. It was two plus two equals potato. But he made me laugh, so he gets a massive win. And of course, I do want to mention the absolute highlight for me, which is R-Truth getting a hot tag in the Royal Rumble. Only a few people could do that. And he was funny, popping up in the women's one as well. And also, obviously, Bron Breaker had an amazing showing. And given how that went too, you could also do Bron Breaker versus Gunther at WrestleMania. And if we are going to do that, I would have Bron Breaker win. I would have him be the guy to defeat Gunther and become the Intercontinental Champion, or Jey Uso, either is fine. But I think the reason it would be such a feather in Bron Breaker's cap is because it's going to totally cement the momentum he has coming up from NXT. And also, there are always a large amount of people that don't watch NXT when someone does come to the main roster. And you were going to tell everyone straight away, we are treating this dude like something special. Because if you only see him for the next couple of months and you get used to him, and then he's the guy to dethrone Gunther, who's held the belt for, what, 700 days, whatever it is, and he becomes an Intercontinental Champion at his first WrestleMania, which stands to reason. You don't even have to tell that story, like, oh, this is what happened. You can see what's going down in the ring. It's not going to affect Gunther either, because again, his showing in the Royal Rumble was awesome. He has achieved to a certain level where he almost protects himself by the way that he does handle himself and his character. So I did I did think it was all right, but no, maybe we'd all built it up in our heads a little bit, which we want to do. We're wrestling fans, but it did not maybe live up to my expectation, which is barely a sentence. But again, at the same time, I love the fact that Cody Rhodes won. I love the fact that we updated to the record, which is something that everybody else has been saying too. Apparently, WWE kind of looked through some of their historical events and like, all oh, this stuff happened 30 years ago, man, 20 years ago. That's why Roman Reigns is going on this massive run. It's why Seth Rollins went on this massive run and Gunther. And now we have people breaking Royal Rumble records too. So maybe a little bit disappointing. Definitely the right winner as I look back in hindsight. But I just, I think you always need a couple of surprises. But actually, all of the surprises I felt were in the Women's Royal Rumble. And in terms of if we are going to do a head-to-head, -head, and you don't need to do that, you can just enjoy them for what they are. But if somebody did put a gun to my skull, I'd absolutely give the nod to the women's one. Because straight away you had Naomi coming back, so the fans were super jazzed and they loved this. You had Jordan Grace coming in, of course, who beat Trinity, now Naomi, for the Knockouts Championship. And that just opens up all the questions of WWE working with TNA, etc, etc. And that just makes it fun. I know Triple H doesn't like the term Forbidden Door, but I do. And I love it when we do do that. And we had a bunch of NXT call-ups who all did really well, like Roxanne Perez and Tiffany Stratton, and there'll be other people I'm forgetting about as well. And of course, maybe the major one was the debut of Jade Cargill, who I thought had a terrific showing. I saw some people saying they don't agree. And again, that's your right to do that. Came in there. She threw Nia Jax around. She eliminated her. She's like an absolute powerhouse. The way we got her out of there was flipping Bailey and Liv Morgan ping-ponging her on the ring apron. And I watched that elimination a couple of times. That is so risky in terms of what the Royal Rumble is meant to be. Liv Morgan obviously was a surprise at number 32. So again, there's more surprises. So could have fallen off that move, but she didn't. So more power to them. And I think Bailey winning was absolutely the right choice because that fan base at Tropicana Fit was so obviously into her and her character. Character. And that's kind of the way that WWE is selling it too. She's always been the bridesmaid and never the bride. Like, you know, never had a big WrestleMania moment. All her friends have won championships, have done this and done that. And it's building that sympathy for when damage control do turn on her. And then, of course, she'll probably now go on to WrestleMania, take on EO Sky, and win that women's championship. And I really do think it's going to be awesome. And I think having a babyface version of Bailey, which we haven't had in years, which isn't the hugger one, but is actually a character that has way more depth, especially because what we're going to do over the next few months off the back of a Raw Rumble win is properly inspired stuff. Because, of of course, the other favorite was Becky Lynch. Some people said Jade Cargill, but I think WWE uh, proved that we didn't need to do that. But yeah, some people said Becky Lynch, but of course she can go to the Elimination Chamber and then she can win that and go on to fight Rhea Ripley, which is perfectly cool. Because I think that there's just more to the Bailey one at the moment. Like everything that Becky and Rhea have been doing is essentially looking at each other going, well, I want to whoop your ass. Well, I want to whoop your ass too. Whereas Bailey wants to be friends with Damage Control. So I like the fact we're building emotion into it. But there's an amazing picture. I'll try and remember to put it on the screen where Bailey is, again, you have to point at the WrestleMania sign, but all 
all the fans are doing it with her as well. And I think that kind of summarized it quite nicely. And that also made me chuckle. But he pointing at the WrestleMania sign for a long old time was ridiculed by fans. But as always, if you stick with something, it almost becomes a meme. Don't tell Cody, he doesn't like memes. <laughs> that was really funny, the press conference. But it almost becomes a meme and now everyone thinks it's funny. And now you want to do it and you want to be a part of it. So yeah, I just thought the women's one was, was super duper good, especially with all the shocks that, that did come along the way. And I just want to see what they're going to do with Jade Cargill next, to be completely honest with you. There's still some people saying she's going to go down to NXT. I doubt we're going to do that. But either way, just keep it simple. I don't need to see Jade Cargill in a 10 minute match. If we do do Nia Jax versus Jade Cargill at the Elimination Chamber, which I presume we're going to do, although actually you could do Nia Jax versus Rhea Ripley there. Anyway, at some point, I presume we're going to do Nia Jax versus Jade Cargill. Just let them slam the crap out of each other. Now, of course, we also had the big stare down between Jade and Bianca Belair, which again, just, I'm an idiot laughing at that too, because it was like, well, I'm strong. Well, I'm strong too. Let's have a strong match. But that should be our WrestleMania match. Let them go down to the performance center. Just let them, you know, practice it and structure it and just put on a six to eight minute match because just because it's WrestleMania doesn't mean that everything has to be 12, 15, 20 minute absolute classic. Go back to that Goldberg versus Brock Lesnar thing at WrestleMania 33. It was just two people smashing each other for five minutes. That's what I want from Bianca Belair and Jade Cargill. I want them to pick each other up. And I want them to throw them around. I want the crowd to go crazy. I want them to flex and then I want them to do it again. I just want to be able to take in the aura. There's that word again. I keep saying it. I shouldn't do. And the star power that they so clearly have. So again, there was to me more foreshadowing in the women's Royal Rumble about what we may be doing down the line compared to the men's one. But again, maybe I've missed some stuff. Although you could also and then argue, well, no, it should be more blatant than that. We should be able to pick up on it. But definitely the right winner. And someone like Tiffany Stratton too, I just thought had a really, really good showing. And she could be called up tomorrow. It sounds like Bron Breaker is now officially on the main roster, although I'm sure he'll finish his NXT dates up too. But Tiffany Stratton, I mean, I don't think she's doing anything on NXT at the moment after her Fallon Henley stuff. Maybe I've forgotten about this. But I would just have her turn up on Raw later or SmackDown on Friday and put her into a program with someone and then do something big with her at WrestleMania because all divisions are better with depth. If there is some way you could get a tag team partner with her, I don't know. But her in the women's tag team division would be excellent because that division needs to be focused on in 2024. And now obviously the Kabuki Warriors have those championships which happened on SmackDown. You could have some banger matches. You just got to give them the opportunity. And man, the thing I've read about the most is this Kairi Sane stuff. She did. I'll try and get it on the screen. Usually we can get away with a few seconds. She did this crazy elimination where she was holding on to the ring apron. Now, after the fact, everyone said this was a botch. Hate that word. It's a mistake. It's an error. It happens to all of us. But if that's what they did after somebody did make a mistake, it was amazing. Now, the only reason I'm inclined to believe this is you kind of see people like holding on to her. But at the same time, if you did plan to do that, you would need some people to hold on to you because she ain't actually a superhero. You can't grab the ring apron in that position and not fall to the floor. So look, sometimes things just come along that are actually of huge benefit. And that would be that would be one for me. I thought it was absolutely terrific. And it made me cringe inside. Like, oh my gosh, that looks absolutely horrible. So yeah, both Royal Rumble matches I thought were super fun. Women's definitely over the men's. The four-way with Roman Reigns was fine. He was always going to win. We had that super RKO, which was awesome. The only thing I would have taken out of it was the Solo Sokoa stuff, because even though it doesn't really have the same sort of effect, having an LA Knight break up a pin or a Randy Orton break up a pin or an AJ Styles break up a pin is the same as Solo getting in there and just wrecking everybody, right? That's the whole point of a four-way. Roman can smash somebody with 900 spears. And if Randy Orton then breaks up the pin, you're like, well, he would have won, but he didn't. So I think we went to the well one too many times with that. And that's the first time I've said that. So I presume that more people are going to feel the same. And Kevin Owens versus Logan Paul, I just thought was super duper fun. I mean, Logan Paul is so good at this. I love the fact we've got Grayson Waller and Austin Theory involved because they're such good pairing. Obviously, they hate Kevin Owens. And I really like the finish when Owens got the nux and you had that amazing camera shot on the referee looking at it. I said this on ups and downs too. The dumb thing about it was though, is that WWE has established the opposite for so many years. So it is what I'm going to keep an eye on. Do we get something similar now on Raw or SmackDown? They just ignore it. It's going to make this one even worse. But if you actually want to now start giving power to the referees where they are able to make VAR calls, I suppose, then absolutely, I think you can get away with more stuff like this. And also, I never thought that the US Championship was going to change hands. So anytime we protect Kevin Owens, I'm never I'm never going to get mad at that because Kevin Owens is just my favorite, really. And he should probably be in all the Hall of Fames already. That was kind of it, too. I mean, it was a four-match show, which I do appreciate. It still went, I got the running town here, like three hours and, and, and 45 minutes. But it never, it never dragged for me. I think that's just the excitement of the Royal Rumble because you get the ah uh, counter and you never know who's going to come out. But I think now is the time to make sure we capitalize on this as we do move into WrestleMania 40. And I think the big question is, what do we do with The Rock? Because if we are going to do The Rock versus Roman Reigns at some point in 2024, is it going to be in Saudi Arabia? That kind of sellers it for me. I don't think that's as exciting. Just 
strange because those shows sometimes don't have much of an atmosphere, but like, I could be happy to be proven wrong. Or does he? is he a special guest enforcer at WrestleMania, which then leads to another match between him and Roman Reigns? And you could kind of get away with that because, of course, somebody needs to stop the bloodline. But also, The Rock giving Roman Reigns a rock bottom and then Cody doing the, the crossroads and getting the three. I mean, nobody would care. He'd still come out and Raw or SmackDown and get a massive pop as a champion, but maybe a little bit of an asterisk by it. But no, overall, I did think it was fun. I was a, a huge fan of what we did do. But even I agree, Mr. Stupid Positive Guy, somebody punched his face in. It did lack something, and I don't know what that was, but not the Women's Royal Rumble, because the Women's Royal Rumble was great, and obviously Liv Morgan was number 30. I know I mentioned it once, but I felt like I'd skirted through it too fast. And who the hell does she feud with? Because she only really got into it with Jade Cargill and Bailey. Maybe you could do Liv Morgan versus Jade Cargill, because why not? Everything's on the table. Now, of course, please do click the video that's on the screen right now. YouTube loves it the most, and the notification bell, so you know when videos are going up. Like the video, share the video, and subscribe. If you're into fitness, it's grillamind.com forward slash Simon. You just go to Simon and get 10% off their pre-workouts, especially a two thumbs up. You'll love them. Patreon.com forward slash Simon316, Simon316 on Instagram and Twitter. I'm on Cameo at Simon Miller, TikTok Simon J. Miller, Merchandise Pro Wrestling Tees and Samson Athletics. Always appreciate people that buy the t-shirts, especially the one 2 t t-shirt, which is doing way better than I expected it to. But otherwise, now we must sleep. I am so damn tired. I could just rest here on the microphone, but it may turn into ASMR, AMSR, whatever that thing is. I know what I'm talking about. Again, my brain has stopped working. Goodbye.